Hi, Pastor Buddy and Sister Ann Wimberly from Lanny Road Baptist Church. We're welcoming you to our online broadcast. We're a fundamental King James Bible-believing church that loves Jesus Christ and one another. We're located at 5998 Lanny Road on the extreme north side of Jacksonville, but we would love to have you visit one of our services in person. Our regular services are 11 a.m. on Sunday and 6 p.m. on Sunday, and then Wednesday nights at 7 p.m. Now, we thank you for tuning in today. Uh, so now, let's go join one of our live services that's already in progress. Love is cleansing by revealing how he made the land to walk again. And he calls a blind to see. And then I cry, dear Jesus, come and heal my broken spirit. And somehow Jesus came and brought me. seated. Take your song book, turn over to page 130. We're going to sing, I am thine, O Lord, A flat.
Well, I thank the Lord that it looks like uh, the storm that was coming is going to be passing by without giving too much issue, is what it's looking like right now. We hope that don't change, but we thank God for His mercies. We thank Him for everything that He does for us. Uh, you never know, you could lose everything you have in, in a split second, and then you have to start all over again and start depending on people that you didn't think you would have to depend on. So uh, we thank God that uh, He's steering this storm away from us this time, and we keep everybody in our prayers that the storm did affect. Yeah, amen. But if you would, take your song book, turn over to page 29. We're going to sing, Oh, I Want to See Him, Look Upon His Face. Amen. That's A flat. As I journey through this land, sing as I go. page 314 and let me catch my breath. We're going to do the old rugged cross. That's B flat. <laughs> I thought my wife was washing my clothes in hot water, but I guess she ain't. <laughs> I gotta lay off them Twinkies. Uh.
stained with blood so divine a wondrous beauty I see for it was on that old cross Jesus suffered and died to pardon and sanctify me cross I will ever be true it shame and reproach gladly bear then he'll call me someday to my home far away where his glory forever I'll share so I'll cherish the old rugged crow till my trophies at last I lay down. I will cling to the old rugged crows and exchange someday for a crowd oh, yeah. y'all may be seated God is so I, I have to say that, quite honestly, I did nothing. <laughs> really, I did nothing. They did the work. But, uh, I, uh, yeah. Brother Rick, what do you got? <laughs> All right. Let me get a swallow of water. My, um, my throat during that singing of the congregational songs <laughs> seemed to lose uh, some of the gears that it's got in it. Uh, so, if I shift from first to third, <laughs> you'll know. You'll know that's why. That's right. Good to see you guys. I've been singing about my Lord.
I've whistled. Lord, please do the same for me. I'm so glad that I can tell you. favorite song Just for me. we're gonna sing the owl granny loves this song so uh she acts like she's ready to go home but we ain't ready for her to go home we still got a lot of fishing to do <laughs> i think she's ready to go see grandpa
this morning. Mm -hmm. uh, Y'all stay up here a minute. Y'all get back up here for a second. I changed my mind. <laughs> Just because I can't sing it myself necessarily don't mean... Um, I want to lead us in How Great Thou Art. That's not a song that we do, but it's a song I think you know. And uh, it's been on my mind. It was on my heart. I can't help it. Um, and I thought that since my voice was shot that I wouldn't do it. But God said, what's that got to do with it? He said, you thought you had a good voice before? <laughs> Go ahead, right? Yeah. Yeah, you thought you was on your ability? No. Let's do A-flat, guys, I think. Um, I don't know. This is our first time. We're going to practice this together. This song is just a worshipful song as I think about how good God's been to us. I've been talking about it all morning already. If you wasn't here earlier during the day, we've been discussing the blessings that God's been pouring on us. And we've talked about how many blessings God's given us and how we look around and we look at the things that's in our lives and we recognize that God has covered us. We, we've got the favor of the Almighty God. Amen. Mm. Oh, Lord, my God. When I
seat back. Is there anybody here this morning like to share how good God's been to you and how His blessings have come in your life? I will. Go right ahead, Miss Liz. Go right ahead. <laughs> Amen. Thank you for that testimony. God's good. Anybody else quickly before we move into the message? We got prayer requests we want to give to you, and then we got a message for you this morning. Somebody, uh, Brother Frank? God this morning uh, for being part of that your God guard you were talking about. Praise God. Amen. So I, I felt like you were saying, uh, small and insignificant. <laughs> God just has my son. <laughs> You're a vital part. That's right. You're helping catch those that are that have fallen by the way. Mm. They're, they're tired and they're resting. And, and you're here to pick them up and lift them up and help them go on. And I'm like, I needed to hear that. Today. Praise God. Amen. <laughs> And can I say on top of that, now we talked about the tribe of Dan this morning in our pre-Sunday school hour, and we just talked about the idea that the tribe of Dan, what happened was when the Israelites were traveling through the wilderness, you know, you guys are, are aware, they traveled 40 years, and they were moving from location to location based on following the pillar of cloud by day or the pillar of fire by night. So God led them uh, through the obvious sign of when the pillar would move, it's time for them to move. And uh, it wasn't a disorganized thing. God had gave them order, and He told them which way that they were supposed to line up. Each tribe had specific uh, responsibilities and duties. And uh, the, the tribe of Dan, one of the largest tribes, was the rear guard. They were the last ones in line. And I know many times folks may think I'm always last, and I'm insignificant, and I'm the least of all. Uh, but the importance of the tribe of Dan was the idea that these guys were protectors of the rear guard. They were the rear guard. They were the ones that stopped the marauders from coming up from behind and uh, to be able to pick off uh, the weaker folks and the older folks that maybe had drifted to the back. And when these folks would stumble along the way or maybe lose their, uh, their strength or their countenance, Dan was there to pick them up and carry them on. And uh, they, they, they knew there was nobody behind them. So if anything was going to be covered, they had to cover it. They were the last resource. And you might feel like sometimes that, that you're, you're just unappreciated or you're left to the rear or, or you do the, the dirty work that nobody else wants to do. But what you may not be aware of is the necessity of your work. Amen. To make sure, amen, to make sure everything is cleaned up. Listen, there's a lot of times our deacons uh, have schedules and, they, and, and they, they, they watch over us during our service time so that no harm will come to us. And, and they also have other duties that they do. And, and many times the deacon or now sometimes the person that works the sound booth may be the last person out of the building. And their responsibility and duty is to make sure that everything has been properly secured. Everything's done. Lights are out. Doors are locked. Amen. You didn't leave a kid sleeping on the pew. Amen. Or a husband. <laughs> they, they make sure, you know, that, that that type of stuff is handled and done. They they clean up. They 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 uh, they secure and they, uh, they they patrol and make sure that it's all cared for at the end. And and what a duty! What a wonderful duty! So the last person out, and and I know because I've served in that position so many times and still do sometimes, uh, will be the last person that that'll walk out of the building. And I just it's a sense of of belonging to me. That reminds me that I have a responsibility. I'm the one that everybody's depending on to make sure that when we walk out, everything was secure, everything was done, every, everybody's needs was met. All the folks had been taken care of. Nobody left in the parking lot with a dead battery or a flat tire. And so we, we make sure that those things are good. Before we leave, we don't leave nobody stranded. And, and, I, and I mentioned the fact that maybe you don't ever get recognition for that because you don't stand up and, uh, on the pulpit area and, and minister and folks maybe don't see you in that position. And uh, you think maybe that what you do doesn't count, but it's in very vital importance to the work of ministry. One of the things that I want to point out that's very important for you to do, old tribe, whoever you are, is prayer. 
is to pray one for another, especially in times like we're in right now. We got some prayer requests coming to us. Uh, Miss uh, Sabrina uh, Smith is still in the hospital with COVID. We've been praying for her, but she is recovering. Uh, a couple of days ago, she was on respirator, and uh, now she is doing better. We heard from her brother just yesterday. Brother Wade said uh, he's got some more job changes on the horizon. We're praying that they all are positive in his favor and for his service unto the Lord. Uh, Miss Ethel says to be praying for her. Uh, she apparently is not feeling well this morning. And Miss Barbara, Miss mm, Barbara Johnson says pray for her health. Am I right about that? Yes. Okay. And then um, uh, Mike Bailey says to pray for Brother Mark Tuberville. We mentioned to you guys this morning, uh, Brother Mark has been diagnosed with the COVID. Uh, so remember him in prayer. I mean, remember Brother Mike also. Brother Mike has to, I guess, get rescheduled to try to get his defibrillator uh, installed. Remember Brother Robert, who is on the mend from his hip surgery. If you're on the prayer chain, you heard he had to go back. They thought he might have had a mini stroke, and that's not the case. Uh, he just was weak from the surgery, and they, he needed a little more time to recover. They sent him home pretty quick for a major surgery like hip replacement. And so anyway, um, he's, he's doing better, and we thank you guys for your prayers. And so um, uh, we, we got those folks we know. Is there anybody else right now that you can think of? Do you need to add, Ms. Ann? Miss Candy Brewer is going in for surgery on Friday, and Miss Frances McKay is in the hospital. Uh, she also contracted COVID while in there, but she uh, they've uh, she's passed that now. They're looking at discharging her in the next day or so. And her son passed away while she was in the hospital uh, from um, cancer. So he had been struggling a couple of years. Y'all y'all remember her in prayer. Um, Alan, brother Wade's son, has uh, been extended in his position full time till October. And that's good news for him. We give God glory for that. And uh, another request of prayer is uh, Michelle McCall says pray for her friend with COVID. Uh, so we're going to remember that. I know there's a, you may know a lot of folks now that's coming down with that. Uh, be praying for them. Um, Brother Mike Cox told me about uh, uh, your activities director, right? Her husband passed away from it. And she's having a real, real tough time with it. So y'all remember as she deals with that. Um, God bless you guys. Let me pray with you and then we're going to get into the message this morning. Father, uh, God, I, I come to you and I recognize, God, that you're the only one that we have to turn to. And the power of our prayer lies in the sincerity of our hearts. And the fact that we know that we are giving up prayer today to the only one that has the power to do anything about it. Lord, you not only have the power, but you're willing so, Lord, we come to you with a heart that is fervent and a desire that, Lord, is burning in our chest uh, that we might intercede on behalf of these folks that have uh, presented these requests. Oh, Lord, we see how you have healed and you have touched and you have restored. We've seen that over and over again. Lord, we know that your arm is not shortened, that you cannot heal. We know that you will deliver. And Lord, I pray that we will keep counting on you to bless in the lives of those that we bring before you because of your great love and your great power and mercy and grace. So today, Lord, we ask that you look upon those requests that we mentioned just now. Guide us and lead us as we come together for worship. Open your word. Open your word to us. Let the preacher, the Holy Spirit, preach to us today. And we will receive and be glad. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you. We're looking this morning in the book of Matthew. We're going to be talking to you about rest. Rest. I, I see a lot of folks that are weary. Tired, burdened, troubled. Oh my. And I want to talk to you about rest. Of course, we're going to the uh, passage of Scripture you're very familiar with in Matthew 11 28 and through verse number 30, where uh, our Lord calls us to come unto Him so that we might be able to find rest. And I want to talk to you about that rest because I don't know that in my brief lifetime, see, I've only been alive 60 years. And in my brief lifetime, I don't know I've ever seen a time that has had more unrest in it 
than what I see right now. When I look around our nation, and not just our nation, I was, I was watching news that goes international and around the world. I mean, they're marching in the streets of, of uh, Germany and, um, and uh, Russia and all and the nations all around this world. Uh, there's a sense of unrest. People are dissatisfied. There's no contentment no matter where they are. No matter what's going on, it just seems to be a discontentment in the heart of mankind. Uh, it, it seems to affect people um, in three ways in particular from my mind, um, uh, mentally, emotionally, and spiritually. Uh, it, it seems to be a distress in their, their minds and in their emotions and in their spirit. It seems to give them perplexion. It, uh, perplexion, I mean, it seems to give them as though they seem to think that there's no answer to the problem. And so they, they struggle and they resist. And the result is turmoil and violence and, and, and hatred. I've never heard so much hate speech in all my life and, and, and so, so much senseless violence that's taking place all around our globe and in our nation today. And what these folks are looking for, they oftentimes don't even know. Uh, they just wanting change, any change. They just want to get out of the situation that they're in. They're, they're wanting to be removed from um, the, the place they're at that seems to be causing them so much unrest, so much distress that they began to um, do things. I, I saw on, uh, on some of these marches they want to defund the police departments. And now any common sense adult would understand that don't even make sense. That don't even make sense at all. But that they, but it's a change. It's, it's they thinking that we need a change. We want to take the power from them and give it back to us. We think we can do it better than they can. <laughs> That's exactly right. It's absolutely silly. Makes you want to bust out laughing. It's absolutely silly. They're the ones that are looting and and uh, and, and tearing up property and setting things on fire, and shooting one another, and they think they can hold the peace better. Than the police force. It's, it's crazy. It's absolutely crazy. Now, I, I saw that in Seattle, I believe it was, they had uh, just they had a flag burning out in the middle of the streets. It was supposed to be a peaceful protest, and they, they said there was no violence that took place, but I saw an American flag completely engulfed in flames. American flag. And then I saw they were throwing Bibles on the fire. And I thought, what? Is there a fight against the country or is it against God? Yes. Yes, it is. There's a, such an unrest. I told you, it's emotional, it's mental, and it's spiritual. There's such a distress in the heart of men. And you know what they're all looking for? You might, you might already know this. They're looking for peace. They're looking for harmony or rest within their soul. They're looking for a place um, now I know there might be forces that are driving these masses that have sinister, more sinister plots, but I'm talking about the masses. These people that are being led and driven by the sinister people, uh, these folks are just looking for peace and rest. They want, it, they want to cease from the struggles. And then in Matthew chapter 11, verse 28, I want to show you what Jesus said. He said, back up one. There it is. He said, come unto me. Who? Oh. Yeah. Oh. How many? And, you know, we think, we think that maybe this, this idea of finding rest in Jesus is just reserved to those of us who are church members. He calls out. To the masses of the world, listen, your, your family, your friends, the, the folks on your block, the, the heathens in your neighborhood. And bless God, if you got a neighborhood, you got heathens. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Yeah, yeah, exactly right. And the, the, to those folks, Jesus calls out with his arms like this and he says, come. Amen. Come unto me. Come unto me. Don't just come join my church. Don't just come attend a service. Come unto the Savior. Come unto the peace giver. Come unto the one who is the Prince of Peace. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will 
meet your need. I will satisfy your longing. I will fill your soul. I will caress the need in you that you have for peace. I will bless you. All ye that labor and are heavy laden. Now, I, 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 let me go on with the verses. Uh, verse number 29, Brother Gary. It says, take my yoke. Jesus invites you, says, and take my yoke upon you and learn of me. Now, I wondered why he would call um, that a yoke. And the idea is that they are already yoked to something that is overburdening them. Amen? We see that in verse 28. They're heavy laden, and they labor. They're burdened. And he says, try my yoke, and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and you shall find rest. Here he says it again. Rest unto your souls. And then in verse 30 he says, why? Before my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Now as I wrote my notes down for the message this morning, those are the three verses I have. And this is what I said. I, talk, I want to talk about the word rest. And rest is not just sleeping an extra hour. Rest is to cease from your labors or your efforts. Lay, to rest means to uh, stop the clamoring that you're going through. Uh, it, it's, it's, to, it's to recognize that all of your efforts are in vain, and that if there's going to be any rescue for you, you got to stop. I've shared with you before, I think I have with you as a congregation, I know I have in, in individual classes about the idea of, of the lifeguard and how the lifeguard sometimes will allow a victim to totally exhaust themselves as they are fighting and fighting and fighting not to drown. But the lifeguard knows that as long as they are fighting, he can't rescue them. You know why? Because they still think they can do it themselves. And if the lifeguard comes into their sphere, into their circle, gets close enough, the victim will grab that lifeguard in an effort to try to save himself and drown the very one who is trying to help him. He'll take him under. He'll try to stand up on him. He'll try to get him down so that he can lift himself up so that he can be saved. And all he's going to do is end up killing both of them. So the lifeguard, the lifeguard lingers back. And allows the victim to struggle until they have labored themselves to absolute exhaustion. And then he will approach and say, okay, stop struggling and let me help you. As they approach them from behind and they, and they try to swim with them back to shore, they said, quit, 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 don't do that. Don't paddle, don't kick, don't do anything. Just let me do it. Let me do it all. I've got you. I've got you. It's a picture of what Jesus does when he says, look, to rest means to cease from your labor because as long as you're trying to do it, you're never going to stop and let him do it. Now, I talked about this morning all the unrest and all the turmoil that I've seen in our country and around the world. Can I just get a little personal with you? I've seen it in our church. I've seen it in the, I've seen it in the lives of believers. Are y'all still with me? I've seen it in the life of folks who say, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Amen. And then they go, ah! yeah. and they bite all their fingernails up to the third joint mm. because of the fear, Amen. the anticipation, the agony, the, uh, the, the turmoil that's in their soul. And they, and they go, oh, I can't, God just, God's left me and I can't find him. But to rest means to cease from your efforts and your labors, and to find peace and assurance and quietness. Woo, for quietness. Quietness means that, man, I, I'm not trying to direct God anymore. And anybody ever heard that? No, I know you ain't never done it, but maybe you've been in a place where you've heard somebody pray a prayer, and it sounds like somebody has given instructions to somebody else. God do this, and God do that, and God do this, and God make sure you do that, and, and telling God what to do. As if our prayer is some kind of a command to Him instead of a communion with Him. Amen. To find peace and assurance and quietness. Do you, does anybody know that when Moses was trapped by the Red Sea to his backside, 
mountains on either side, and Pharaoh and his army coming down the gullet, that God said to Moses, stand still. What? What do you mean stand still? Right, the train's coming, that's exactly right. Death is on, hey, certain destruction, trouble is coming. And you say, stand still. You, God is saying, quiet, son. Quiet. You know about Elijah in the cave. Remember Elijah in the cave? And remember he was complaining that, you know, that uh, nobody cared for God's bit work and, 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 and he had done all these things and thought maybe that God should kill him too because he's the only one left. You know, everybody else had done quit and he done tried and he can't do it by himself, you know. You know, you, ever, you ain't never felt that way before, I bet you. Especially if you ever come up to the church and you're working and you see somebody go by pulling their boat. <laughs> And you go like, really? Really? And you think, oh my goodness, I'm the only one that cares. Nobody else even loves God anymore. And so Elijah was telling God about this. And remember that, that the Lord sent by this incredible whirlwind, this storm that came through. And, and he said, I want you to listen. And he didn't see God in the whirlwind. And then he sent this fire, and, and it came rumbling through. And an earthquake came. And, and Elijah didn't see God in any of those events. And then in the quietness, when everything had settled, and Elijah's just there. He hears, Elijah, Elijah, I love you. I will be with you to the end. I will never leave you or forsake you. That still, small voice. Now go and stand before kings and give my word. Go tell my people, thus saith the Lord. Elijah went, oh, he found God in the quiet place. Sometimes the reason that you can't hear God speak, you can't hear God speaking because you won't rest. You won't find rest. You won't come to the place of quietness. And the third definition I saw when I looked up the word peace, Webster had a bunch of them, it, it says reconciliation. And I thought to myself, what does, in, in my application, what does rest have to do with that? And I thought about the idea that reconciliation to bring, uh, to bring rest and peace and quietness into my soul means that I can lay my head in the lap of the Savior. Amen. Amen. I can. I can. I. I found a reconciliation. I've. I've got that closeness again. There's a security in the fact of having the harmony and the peacefulness of communion with the Holy God. Woo! So listen to me for a second. I. I, I might have to do this in two parts. This is what I want to share with you. So many times we as believers are fighting trying to find somehow that the, our walk with God is the answer to all of earth's troubles and that somehow that we are the ones that are supposed to be facilitating that and that God is supposed to be giving us all of this, um, the answers to life's issues. And we get perplexed when troubles come. And we don't know what to say or what to do. Let me give you a piece of advice. There's one God, and you ain't Him. Amen. One God, and you ain't Him. If you will recognize that although you belong to Him, you're not Him, and you will find reconciliation You'll receive that sense of peace, and you will cease from your labors and your efforts, and you'll find quietness, peace with God. My wife and I were talking about this this week, and uh, I had to put it in here. I, I wrote, to have the peace of God, you must have the God of peace. Amen. I hope you got that. Amen. You got to have the God of peace in order to have the peace 
of God. Uh, you, you struggle to find the peace or the quietness or the, uh, the, the ceasing or the reconciliation without having a relationship with a holy God. He said, come. Come unto me. Uh, the call is to whosoever will. He doesn't qualify that and say, if you're good enough. Uh, he doesn't qualify that and say, look, look, if you've got the skills or the ability. He doesn't say, you know, to those who are religious enough, come. He calls to all of those who are laboring or struggling and working against their own good, thinking that somehow that the answer must be within them. He says, come to me. It's to every individual. Now listen, that, that applies to believers and unbelievers alike. Because I know some believers that still think they got all the answers. Shame on you. you I know some believers that still think that it's all about them. And, and unbelievers that are struggling trying to make sure that they think they don't need God, they think that the answer is in this world system somehow. And he says, come unto me. And I will give you rest. You will find, what does he say in verse number two? You will find rest unto your souls. He says, come unto me. It's to Christ. Now, when we come, it's not coming to religion and it's not coming to church. I love coming to church. I love it. I love it. I love it. But I'm telling you, that's not what changes me. It's coming to him. I find my peace in His presence. I find my joy in His presence. He says, come unto me. It's come to Christ. You don't just come and agree with His teachings or His doctrines, but, but you come in totality. You, you surrender completely unto Him. You rest. You give up. You lay down your weapons and your tools and, and your armament. You lay it all down and say, here I am. You bring you. Now, what is it that you bring? I wanted to say this. You bring yourself. And you bring all of you. You leave nothing behind. Listen, you don't just bring the good. How many times have you tried to witness to somebody and they say, well, if I could ever quit that drinking, I'd come. If I could ever quit that drug, and I'd come. If I could ever quit that cursing, I'd be there. If I could ever get my life straightened out, then I'm going to come to church and I'm going to serve the Lord. Listen, He wants you to bring all that unto Him. He wants you to come to Him just as you are. He wants you to surrender. Lay down all your struggles. Lay down all your efforts. You're trying to get fixed. Our efforts leave us weary and burdened down. If you look at Matthew chapter 11, verse number 28 again. Look at verse 28 once again. You'll see here that He says, Come unto me, all ye that what? Labor and are heavy laden. That means you're burdened. That means you are overloaded. That means that you feel like that the burden, that the load on you is more than you can stand. You ever been there? Sure. Ain't a person alive draws air. Ain't never felt like, man, this is more than I can handle. I'm just, I'm just saying to you that those efforts that we do, that we go through, because every time we try something, it seems like we get slapped back down. We, we try one step forward and it seems like it puts us two steps backwards. And we go like, really? I'm trying to do, and it seems like the more I try to do, the behinder I get. He says, stop that. Won't you come to me? What do you, won't you just come to me? Now, are we, we're talking about, uh, you, you can see it resulting in material things, but listen, I'm talking about emotional, mental, and spiritual efforts also. When folks are trying to find harmony in their home, you know what happens when somebody's trying to get harmony in the home? The husband usually is always sure that it's the wife that needs to get her mind right. Yep. Right? Yeah, honey, if you just get straight with God <laughs> and recognize that I know it all. Right? I, that's kind of the way it is. Uh, and every man's looking at his wife thinking, honey, I never shared that to you, did I? But, uh, but I, or, or maybe vice versa. Sometimes it may be the wife thinking, you're a knucklehead. 
You know, and, and you need to, and so anyway, the, the idea is that somebody is thinking that they have the ability to manipulate, or y- y'all know that word, right? Uh, that means to try to change somebody, uh, to, to, to manipulate somebody else in order to bring about the desired results in their home, and it just, can, when you do that, it seems like it gets worse. It, it's, it's, like, it's like sticking that stick up into the hornet's nest. Man, it's, 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 it, you know, you thought you was going to make a difference, and you did. <laughs> right? You made a difference. You won't soon forget it. It's, it's, a, it's a struggle. I mean, uh, uh, so the, the things I'm talking about that God says bring to Him are not just uh, material things. They're, they're our relationships. They're our emotional distresses. When you are always worried about every single thing. Not too long ago, a couple, three weeks ago maybe, we had a, there was a couple that, that died on Lim Turner uh, from a tree that mysteriously in, on a calm day busted and fell right on top of their car as they're traveling. I, you know, all you can say is that God called them home because, I mean, it just... It's just too impeccable of timing for that to happen. Uh, but, you know, you, you may have been driving down Lim Turner. I did it. Uh, driving down Lim Turner a few days after that, and you, you're looking at the trees going, I better keep an eye on them boogers. <laughs> Ain't going to get me. Yeah, everybody's going laughing and, look, and nodding like, you did that. I know you did. You're looking at the trees going, that one's leaning pretty big. I'm moving over this way. I think about coming to church through you, Lee, next time. Right. So, I mean, uh, because of the idea, and you, we, it's an emotional or a spiritual um, struggle that you go through. You, you get burdened down. You've got things that need to be uh, handled in your life, and you feel like nothing. You know, you, there's constant worry, 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 worry. Oh, my goodness. Uh, I, I called somebody the other day. That I, uh, that I admittedly don't often call. I called somebody, and, and, they, and, I, and they must have saw my, my number come up on their phone. And I said, hey, this is Brother Buddy. And they said, what's wrong? <laughs> I'm, uh, what do you mean, what's wrong? Immediately, well, you calling me, something must be wrong. Oh, my goodness, I must not call you often enough then. But the worry... The worry, there's got to be something wrong. Something's happened. The trouble and the turmoil that our hearts and our minds get into, to where we, we can't possibly believe that God would ever turn it around so that we would be at peace and at rest so that when we get that phone call or when we're in our, our homes and, and there's a disagreement about something that we can still have peace and we can still have harmony. We can still have unity. When we maybe are missing um, the material things that we think we need for life, then we can still be happy and still find joy. I got I to gotta get to the end quickly. Our efforts leave us weary and burdened down. The st- more you struggle, the harder it is because those things, I don't know if anybody's ever told you this or not, but those things never, ever, ever really belong to you and never will. Amen. You can buy all you want. My daddy told me, and I never, I never could quite, my daddy was a genius, and I never could quite grasp some of the things he tried to teach me. And he told me a long time ago, he said, even the property, son, that we bought is not really mine. Amen. And I said, well, who does it belong to? Then? He said, if it belonged to me, he said, why do I have to pay taxes on it to the government? Right. Oh, no. He said, it doesn't really, he said, everything in this world everything in this world, you never can really possess it. He said, it's here today and it's gone tomorrow. Even the Apostle Paul told Timothy, he said, you you need to instruct those that are rich among you that they don't trust in uncertain riches because they vanish away. They're here today and gone tomorrow, as you said. So, I want to talk about the yoke for a minute, and then I'll let you go. Listen, we talked about our efforts leaving us weary and burdened down. And Jesus said, I want you to take my yoke upon you in verse 29. Try my yoke. Put off the old yoke and put my yoke on. Now, I, I wondered why did he say yoke? Why did that, why would he have us tied? And to yoke just simply means to be joined to 
to be partnered up with, to become one with another. And he says, why don't you yoke up with me? Why don't you come to my side? Why don't you see things from my point of view? Why don't you let me pull the load? Why don't you join in in the efforts that I've done? Why don't you see the work and the labor that I have put forth and let it belong to you? He says, you need to learn of me. In verse 29, take my yoke upon you, learn of me. Because when we come to him and we yoke up with him, he begins to reveal himself to those of us who are his sheep. He's, he's told us that I will reveal myself to you. Come to me. Come and abide with me and I will reveal myself unto you. I will show you who I am. And he He'll do that to those of us who come and yoke up with Him. Jesus' yoke, He said, is easy. I looked at that word. That word means good and profitable. My yoke is good and profitable. What? My yoke is good and profitable. If you'll come and labor under the yoke of being teamed up with Jesus, he said it'll be good and profitable. He also said, My burden is light, which simply means that it's full of joy. It's full of joy and it is peaceable. You find rest. Listen, if, you're, if the burden that Jesus gives us brings us into a place of peace, then Lord, load me up with burdens. Right? You'll find that it's light and it's joyful. I got to tell you that most folks in this world, because of the way most believers live, believe that being a Christian is bondage. You understand what I'm saying, right? I had a friend I worked with that told me one time, he said, why is it that y'all can't drink? He said, what's wrong with it? He said, I, he said, I wouldn't be a Christian because you, I, I you can't even drink. I said, I can drink if I want to. Yeah. I am not set free. I said, I'm not bound to. And I said, the problem is I've been set free from it. And I said, the issue is, is that you can't not drink. He said, yes, I can. I said, okay, then throw all that. No, I ain't throwing that. You can't let it go. Right. It owns you. The, the yoke is broke for me. I, I have something that brings peace, that satisfies beyond the alcohol, beyond the drugs, beyond, beyond all of the temptations of sin that this life can bring. There's something that we turn to that has a peaceable, a very joyous existence. Serving the Lord is exciting and full of joy. Being a Christian has been the greatest thing that's ever happened in my life. Amen. Man, I've been, I've been to Disney World. I, I, I've been to, uh, what's that one in Tampa, Bush Gardens. I've been, I've been to a bunch of amusement parks. What's the Wild Adventures? Man, I've been to Wild I love Wild Adventures. But there ain't no place ever brought joy to my soul like being a believer. There's no place that's brought such peace and happiness and contentment like being a believer. Man, we, we've been to the, uh, the Grand Canyon. I've been to the Niagara Falls. We've seen the, the, the redwood trees out in California. Um, man, I've been in the desert, petrified forest out in the desert. I, we, we've been in the painted desert. I don't know who painted it. But yeah, we've, been, uh, we've been on Pikes Peak and we've been at the bottom of Pikes Peak. We, we've done a lot of traveling just to see stuff and I'd go, woohoo, and then we leave. And for a little while I'd smile, we'd look at pictures, but it didn't bring any lasting joy. Amen. It didn't bring any peace and, and, and great contentment. But I'm telling you, I'm telling you, 40 years ago I gave my heart. Amen. I gave my life. Hallelujah. Yeah. I gave my life to the one who said, come unto me. And ever since then I've been filled with His joy and His peace. Sometimes the storms want to get in and I might lose my focus, but He calls me and says, Bud, come unto me. Amen. Come unto me and I'll give you rest. Amen. You know, every time I get that turmoil, every time I start worrying, every time I start looking at something else, He goes, hey, come to me. Amen. 
And every time I turn my focus back to him, I find that his yoke is easy, it's good, it's profitable, and his burden is light. It has joy, and it is peaceable to my soul. Listen, this is what I wanted to ask you this morning. Are you still laboring? You still struggling? I mean, are you still trying to do this within your own strength? Do you still have a plan that you're trying to exercise? I'll never forget my boss man whenever I got into sales. He told me one time, he said, we got in his car. I was in his back seat. There was several of us in there. And he looked at me and he said, he said, what's your plans for this time next year? I said, what? Let me look at my account. He said, no, I want to know what your plans for. How about five years from now? Ten years from now? What? He said, you got to have a plan. He said, if you ain't got a plan, you're a part of somebody else's plan. Oh, Lord, I got to get a plan. And I, I began to think that I had to have a plan. I'm going, I, don't, I, don't want, I got to get a plan. And I tried to apply that in pastoring. I thought, man, I need a plan, man. I need to know where we're going to be in five years, 10 years, 15. I need to get something going on. I need a plan for next month and a month. And, and God slowed me down and said, boy, why are you working so hard? Yeah. Come on. I'm your plan. Yeah. I'm your plan. That's right. I done got this all. I know what tomorrow, I know what next year, I know what five years, 10 years, 15 years looks like. I already know. I've been there. I'm already there. Amen. I got a plan for you. Why don't you just get in and hook up to my yoke? Amen. Why don't you just, why don't you quit trying to drive this thing and, and leave the driving to me? Amen. Amen. Um, are you, if you're still laboring, I would say, like Jesus said, come unto Jesus. Come unto me, all ye labor. Come to Jesus. Cast your burdens upon Him. He cares for you. Are you heavy laden? Are you burdened down? Are you, are you carrying a load that you think is just too much for you? Then I would suggest, why don't you come on? Come to the Lord. Brother Rick, you and Brother Garney would come, and I want to do a, an invitational song this morning. I know we've gone a few minutes longer than normal. It was extra long service and singing, I know. But uh, I, I, I want to give you the opportunity today, because this is what I, I believe with all of my heart. As I look out over this congregation, and I know we're about 50% of what normal comes, and I'm okay with that. I don't want nobody here that don't feel comfortable about coming. And I want you to be comfortable about coming. And you're here today. I want you to understand that God knew this a long time ago. He knew way before COVID ever come into play. He understood and he knew, and he's seen this day. I believe he's inspired this message, and he knew that you would be here. Mm -hmm. And it may be because there's turmoil, there's unrest, there's dissettlement, discontentment, disquietness in you. And you needed a chance for someone just to point that out. And you can shake it off because maybe nobody else knows and you can go out that door and you can continue on the path that you've been on and try to see if things will turn out different. You know what they say about that, right? That's the red definition of insanity. Keep doing things the same way and see that they're going to turn out different. Why don't you stop today and heed the call that Jesus put out. Amen. One of the most famous of all passages of scriptures, come unto me all ye who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Would you stand with me today? Maybe today is the day that you'll say, you know what? I'm going to try that very thing. I'm going to try laying down all of my efforts. Go ahead, buddy. And I'm going to try today to give it to the Lord. Would you come today? Maybe there's something you need to lay upon Him. God bless you, sister. Anybody else today? God wants to speak to you. God bless you, my sister. Anybody else today? see the sisters moving. Is there any brothers today that would say, Lord, I've got some things I've been holding on to trying to do myself. I need to give those things to you, brothers. We need to lead our families in the way of how that we repent and we walk with the Lord. God bless you. Another sister there. Anybody else, quickly come now. Come unto me, he said. I
Anybody else today? Would you come and trust him? One of these days is Brother Rick singing, we're going to see him face to face. Right now we do that through the connectivity of prayer. Would you come? He's here waiting for you right now. Would you come? I'm fixing to let you go. Oh, what a day. Would you come? The chorus one more time, Rick, if you will. Oh, what a day. Coming today. When my Jesus I shall see. Come on, cast when your cares. He cares for you, casting all your cares. Face, Ain't there something you need to lay down? Ain't there some effort or labor that you need to grace, surrender today? When he Here's your opportunity. God has spoken to you today. You know what my desire is, is that every single time that you come through those doors, God gives you something. Amen. God speaks to you in some way, and maybe you don't move that right then and there, but I pray that you ponder it, and that it works into your soul. Feeds you, blesses you, helps you along the way. That's our goal. Amen. Amen. We'll be back this evening at 6 o'clock. We got a whole new batch made up for you, uh, a spread that I believe that God Himself has put together. Uh, at 4.30 this afternoon, our, our folks will be meeting, all the teams will be meeting, uh, finance events, deacons will be meeting starting at 4.30, but then at 6 o'clock, I'd love to see you back for worship again. My prayer for you today as you leave is that God, it will be a God-filled day. Amen. That everywhere you go, you can't help but see the hand of God in your life. I pray He reveals that to you today. Fathers, I bow before you. I ask for a special anointing upon the life of every individual as they go forth from this place. May the presence of God be undeniable. May every individual sense the anointing of God so much in their life that they say, I got to have more of that. I got to live in the, I've got to live in the center of His will. I want to experience that all the time. There's never been a place more blessed than the middle of the will of God. Now I ask God for a special anointing and blessing on each and every one. I pray you'd see us home safely. And then as we return to worship again tonight, we give you glory and honor and praise as the Lamb of God, the King of kings, and Lord of lords. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. amen. God bless you guys, and thank you for being here. Pastor Buddy here. Thank you for joining us today for our worship service. It is my prayer that you have heard from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, through something that was sung or preached or said. If God has touched you, then I would urge you that you surrender to him today without delay. If you've made a decision to trust Christ as your personal savior, or maybe you have chosen to surrender to him more fully in his lordship, then I would urge you to let us know by giving us a call at 904-924-8240, or you can email me at pastor, P-A-S-T-O-R, at lrbcjax.org. Until next time, may God be richly blessing you.